Hey, what's going on, guys? And welcome to another episode of the crack pack series. I hope you all are doing very, very well. For those uh, in the U.S., I hope you had a fantastic Thanksgiving. Uh, outside the U.S., I don't know if you had a holiday this week, but I hope you had a great week anyway. So today we are opening up a pack of Odyssey. Uh, this is not a pack, uh, to my knowledge at least, uh, in recent memory that we've opened a lot of. Uh, I think we maybe have had it once or twice, but it is a really cool pack. Uh, I don't know the year, actually. I was going to see if it's on the, the back here. It usually is. 2001. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, fairly old set. Uh, lots of really cool stuff in it. Old card frame. Uh, all the cool stuff. Uh, we are going to go through this as if we're drafting as well. So, I don't know this set uh, exceedingly well, if I'm honest. I do know a few of the, me the mechanics and things like that, so we will certainly highlight those as we go through, but... We're learning together uh, with a set like this, so we'll see what we get, but our first card here is a good one, uh, Wild Mongrel, one in a green for a 2-2, two -two. Uh, and you can discard a card from your hand, and it gets plus one, plus one, and becomes the color of your choice until the end of the turn, so uh, what's really great about this is you can pump it kind of at any time, as long as you have cards in your hand, uh, and so it's basically like an on a stick combat trick, if that makes sense, uh, which rhymes and is really cool. Um, so I actually really like this card. It enables a lot of stuff as well. Uh, any kind of discard outlet stuff generally is going to enable something, which is great. Uh, whether that's helping a reanimator strategy or a madness enabler or anything like that. Uh, it does a lot of that stuff. And so it's actually just a really, really solid two drop. Uh, at, at its very worst, it's a two, two for two. So it's already kind of on point with the stats. So I actually really like this very strong uh, opening card. We'll see what we get through the rest of the pack, but I definitely like this card. <clears throat> uh, Hallowed Healer is a 1-1 one, one for 2 and a white. Uh, you can tap it and prevent the next 2 damage that would be dealt to target creature or player this turn. Uh, and then Threshold is a mechanic for this set. So uh, Threshold was an ability that basically was active as long as you had 7 or more cards in your graveyard. Uh, and so uh, something like Wild Mongrel, again, kind of helps enable uh, the threshold mechanic in, in, its, in itself. So it's actually a really cool, uh, interesting way to kind of utilize the graveyard. But uh, if you do have threshold, you can tap it and prevent the next four damage that would be dealt to target creature or player this turn instead. So uh, basically, as we're seeing here, that threshold mechanic essentially gives a little bit of a buff to usually an already stated ability, which is cool. Uh, or it just gives a buff to a creature or something like that. Um, this card, not really my favorite. Uh, it's sort of like... It's just onboard protection, which is fine, uh, but it is just a 1-1 one, one for 3 on the face of it, which means it's going to die pretty early, uh, and while preventing damage is nice because uh, it is on a stick, normally if this was just on an instant or sorcery, it would be very, very bad. Uh, on a stick, it's not quite so bad because it's repeatable, uh, and you can protect creatures and yourself with this, which I like. Uh, but it's not a very aggressive card, and really in draft especially, you want to be as aggressive as possible to try and just win as quickly as possible. That's, that's usually the goal. Uh, and so Wild Mongrel fits that bill much, much better uh, than Hollowed Healer, so not super stoked on this card if I'm honest. Uh, Dusk Imp uh, is 2 and a black for a 2-1 with Flying. Uh, pretty straightforward card here, not a whole lot to talk about. Uh, it is a little bit low on stats, but it does have flying to kind of make up for it. Uh, the downside to this is that one toughness. If it was a 2-2 two -two for 3 with flying, I'd be a little bit more apt uh, to wanting it. Um, but to be honest, a 2-1 is going to die to literal anything that has flying. <laughs> um, and so I kind of don't like that. Uh, it is probably going to get in for a swing or two, which is good, and I think if you can get in for a swing or two, it's probably worth it, but uh, it's just not my favorite. Uh, Wild Mongrel has much, much higher upside uh, and just has better synerg synergy excuse me, across the board. Uh, Oromancer is a 2-2 two -two for two and a white. Uh, when it comes into play, return target enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. Um, this is actually a really interesting card for like constructed decks, uh, especially like commander constructed where uh, you're playing like a green white enchantment uh, style deck. Uh, this is a great one to be able to bring those back and give you that recursion for sure. Uh, unfortunately in draft, a little bit less powerful. Not saying that you will not have a target for this, but obviously drafting is really creature centric. Uh, not always of course, but the general rule is you're going to win on board. Uh, and so being able to return an enchantment specifically 
may not be the best thing in the world. Uh, that being said, if you find a really strong enchantment in the pack, uh, definitely take it and then maybe look for something like this. Uh, I think this is the card that you pick after picking that really crazy good enchantment uh, and knowing that you've got a target for it. I don't think you pick it first. Uh, on its own, it's just a 2-2 two, two for 3. Not great. Uh, much rather have the Wild Mongrel for sure. Uh, Blazing Salvo is an instant for 1 red. Uh, deals 3 damage to target creature unless that creature's controller has it deal 5 damage to him or her. Uh, really interesting. I kind of don't like this. Uh, of course it's efficient, so either way it's going to be dealing minimum of 3 damage. That's great. Uh, and at instant speed, also very, very good. Uh, however, most of the time uh, they're either going to be targeting a creature that's not super strong uh, because it's only going to be dealing 3 damage to it, or they're just going to be like, okay, well, I'll just take five and then it doesn't matter. Either one, obviously, is not good for the opponent. Don't get me wrong. But generally, if there's something you're willing to target with this, it's because you really want it gone. Uh, and they'll know that. I mean, they, they can see the board state just as well as you can. And so they'll be able to make that determination uh, and, and kind of weigh their options and pick the, pick the side of this card that's going to be best for them. So... I don't love giving the opponent the choice here. I think that's the big downside to a card like this. This is not necessarily straight up removal. It's just burn, uh, and you don't necessarily know where it's going to hit. So uh, I'd rather have the consistency of a card like Wild Mongrel here over this. Uh, if it was just straight up deal three damage, that would be a little bit harder to pass, uh, in my opinion, uh, because again, removal is very, very good. So uh, in this case, though, because it gives the opponent the choice, I think I'm going to pass on it here. Uh, Dematerialize is a sorcery for three and a blue. Uh, return target permanent to its owner's hand. What's really nice, by the way, about that is it is any permanent, not just a creature or an artifact or anything like that. It's literally anything. Uh, and then it also has flashback for five and two blue. Uh, so again, we're seeing a little bit of synergy with Wild Mongrel. Uh, basically, what this allows you to do is play the card again from your graveyard by paying its, its flashback cost. Uh, after you do, you do have to exile it, remove it from the game, but... Uh, it gives you two uses out of some of your cards, which is actually really, really nice. Uh, we see flashback be a really, really key uh, uh, mechanic, excuse me, couldn't think of the word, uh, in a lot of sets, actually, because it is just a very, very strong mechanic. Uh, and again, just getting two uses out of your cards is always great. So uh, I actually like this. It's a bit slow, though, I will say. Uh, it's nice that it can hit any permanent, but I think I'd rather it hit only a creature and it be like two mana. Uh, with a, a little bit of a cheaper flashback cost. Uh, that being said, it's not bad. It's definitely a card I think I'd run, but it's definitely not first pickable either. Uh, I don't think this is a reason to be blue. Uh, and again, it's, it's just a little too expensive. I don't think it's that great. Uh, Avon Cloud Chaser is a 2-2 for 3 and a white. Uh, it does have flying, and when it comes into play, destroy target enchantment. Uh, so again, this is very much a utility creature, similar to the Oromancer, uh, in that, you know, you may have a target for this, but you don't necessarily know it right off the bat. Uh, this obviously is much more dependent on the opponent's deck. You probably don't want to blow up your own enchantment. Uh, and so I think this is a fine sideboard card, uh, but generally cards like this are really tough to main board because you don't really know what you're up against until you've played at least one game with that player. So uh, you do kind of want to side this in more than I think you want to main deck it. At worst, it's a 2-2 flyer for four. A little expensive, but it's somewhat playable. I mean, if you really needed a playable on four, you could bring this in and just have that main board uh, kind of enchantment hate if you needed to. But I would much rather play just a really strong four drop than something like this, which is going to give me utility, but not necessarily have a target. Uh, Ravage Thailands is a land. Uh, it comes into play tapped. It does add one red to your mana pool if you tap it, and then you can tap it and sacrifice it and add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So uh, these are really interesting lands solely because they help you splash other things, but they're kind of a one-time use thing. Um, if you find yourself really light on one color, uh, something like this is actually, I think, a very strong pickup. Uh, and I think they're probably fine depending on the deck you're in uh, anyway. Uh, I, I think uh, if you're in multicolor, it's good to pick up some fixing for sure. 
The downside here is they do come into play tapped. So if you're playing like an aggro focus deck where you're really trying to win very, very quickly, uh, having tapped lands in your deck is not always the best thing. Uh, just because while it does fix you, and that's obviously great, uh, it comes into play tap, which means you're not being you're not being able to play stuff on curve if you get this in the early turns. Uh, so if this is your turn one land and you have a one drop in your hand, you can't actually play it. Uh, and so that's that's kind of the trick that you run into is maybe it's a little bit you know a little bit high risk high reward uh, to play something like this in an aggro deck where it could come into play tapped and really really set you back. So I'm uh, gonna pass on it here. That being said though, uh, later in the draft if I was looking for you know fixing and things like that, I think I would consider something like this. <clears throat> Psionic Gift is one in a blue for an enchant creature. Uh, the enchanted creature has tap, and this creature deals one damage to target creature or player. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, pinging is actually very, very good uh, for a lot of reasons. One, it's just consistent damage. Uh, that's really, really key because it's always threatening. Uh, and I think that's really, really nice. On top of that, it deals it to the creature or the player. <clears throat> excuse me, uh, which is also very nice because it's going to be able to deal with some of these low ground creatures. For instance, we saw that 2-1 Imp. This just kills it. Uh, that being said, it is an enchant creature, which I don't love. I'd rather have it just tacked onto a creature already uh, because you do open yourself up, as you guys know, for those two for ones. I talk about that all the time. Uh, that's the reason I'd lean out of enchant creatures most of the time. <clears throat> excuse me, guys. I got something in my throat. Um, that being said, uh, this isn't a bad enchantment. It's just something that you do have to keep in mind if you're going to play it. I honestly still like the Wild Mongrel better. Uh, it enables a lot more, specifically in this set. Uh, Threshold, Flashback, the things that we've already seen are really, really good synergy with the Wild Mongrel. Uh, whereas this is just a fairly strong card on its own, but dies very heavily to removal, uh, opening yourself up for that two for one. So I think I'm going to go for the Wild Mongrel here, but I actually don't hate this enchant creature as much as maybe you know, just the regular buffs, you know, plus two, plus one, or something like that. <clears throat> uh, Simplify is a sorcery for one green, and each player sacrifices an enchantment. Fairly straightforward card. Again, sideboard, in my opinion. Uh, definitely enchantments seem to be a sub-theme, uh, considering how much enchantment-focused uh, things we've seen so far. Um, but I don't like that each player sacrifices an enchantment. It is efficient, uh, but if they have two enchantments out, for instance, then they just get to pick the lesser of two evils, essentially. So uh, I don't love this one as much as I love something that's really targeted, destroy target removal, or target enchantment, excuse me. Uh, but sacrificing can be worth it. It just depends on the board state. Again, to me, much more of a sideboard card, though. I would not pick it early. <coughs> Uh, Overeager Apprentice is a 1-2 for 2 and a black. Discard a card from your hand, sacrifice the Apprentice, and add 3 to your mana pool. 3 black, excuse me. Uh, this is very interesting because it's basically Dark Ritual on a stick, which I think is funny. Um, I don't love it, though. <clears throat> I think it certainly has some utility, uh, being able to, again, discard cards. We've already seen that's actually very powerful in this format. Uh, but it's a one-shot deal. You only get to do it once because you also have to sacrifice the apprentice. Uh, and you do ramp, which is good. <coughs> Guys, sorry. So sorry. Um, but uh, I don't think it's necessarily worth it. I think if you've got a really good bomb that you're trying to get out early, maybe you pick this. Uh, but I do think the Wild Mongrel just on its own is stronger. Uh, not only that, but just looking at the stats alone, it's a 2-2 two, two for 2 on the Mongrel it's a one, two for three on the apprentice. So uh, just onboard presence, I think Wild Mongrel is a little bit better. Uh, it also is a repeated enabler while this is a one shot use. <clears throat> Ooh, okay, Psychotog is a very good card. So it's a one, two for one, a blue and a black. Discard a card and it gets plus one, plus one until the end of the turn. Remove two cards from the graveyard and it gets plus one, plus one until the end of the turn as well. Uh, <clears throat> this is a really unique card, uh, because it enables itself. <coughs> Guys, I'm so sorry. I keep coughing. Um, this enables itself by pumping itself, which is kind of crazy. It also just has really good synergy with the rest of this set. Uh, so there's a lot of positive with a card like this. It's sort of like Wild Mongrel on steroids, if that makes sense. Uh, because while you're discarding cards in the exact same way that you would for the Mongrel, you're also then able to remove those cards from the graveyard to pump it up even more. And so you can just deal tons and tons of damage. 
things to note, uh, it is a little bit more expensive and harder to cast because obviously you're looking at two colors, not just one. Uh, and it's a little bit weaker on the onset. It's only a one, two, but uh, I actually think this is a stronger pick. Uh, it just gives you so much utility for all of the cards that you know, you've either already used or you're waiting to use or anything like that. And so I kind of have to lean into this a little bit more. While the Wild Mongrel definitely leaves you a little bit more open in terms of colors, I think this card just has such high upside that it's really difficult to pass. <clears throat> Uh, Sphere of Grace is three and a white for an enchantment. Uh, if a black source would deal damage to you, prevent two of that damage. So very, very focused sideboard card. Obviously, you bring this in if you're against a black deck. No questions asked. That's just the right call. Uh, but I do think that's all it is. Uh, it is a strong enchantment, and obviously we're seeing st some of the reasons why we're having so many you know, enchantment-focused cards. Uh, but... I don't think it's main boardable at all. Uh, you're going to run into decks where they're not playing black, and so it's just not worth it. So very good sideboard card. Definitely not the pick here, though. Uh, that's something you would pick up later if you find yourself in white uh, ju just to have access to. <clears throat> Puppeteer is a 1-2 two for 2 and a blue. Uh, pay 1 blue and tap it and tap or untap target creature. So interesting card here. Tappers are notoriously very powerful, actually. Um, and I actually really like that this untaps creatures as well, because that just means you can leave stuff back uh, on defense. Well, you can attack with them and then also have them on defense if you need them uh, with just being able to untap and then block with them. Uh, so there's a lot of positive to a card like this, and I do think this is a very strong card. I would love this to go along with Psychotog, if I'm honest, but I have to go with Psychotog here. I just think it's such a powerful, uh, really could be a game winning card. Whereas this is a very good, like, kind of tempo play uh, and very, you know, board centric. You look at the board, you determine what's what's the best option to tap or untap, and then you can kind of move forward with that plan. Psychotog is just a giant beater. Like, that's all it is. But that's exactly what you need. Uh, and so I have to go with Psychotog over this, but I do really, really like both of these cards. And then our rare, wow, is Upheaval. So it's a sorcery for four and two blue, very powerful card. Return all permanents to their owner's hands. So with, with this card, just put this out there, all permanence includes lands, creatures, artifacts, enchantments, literally everything goes back to the hand. Um, normally what you do with a card like this is uh, you try and ramp out the upheaval, set your opponent back pretty heavily, uh, and then you're able to rebuild with some extra mana if you can. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know how easy that is in this set. Uh, we see this card a lot nowadays in like uh, Legacy and Vintage Cubes, I believe, are like the most popular places. And it's very, very good there. I don't know how good it is, honestly, uh, in just the straight up Odyssey drafts. I, 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 I just don't know the set well enough, to be honest. Uh, it does leave you a little more open. You're not tied to blue and black. You're, you're tied to uh, just blue. Uh, this is a very good, powerful card, regardless, I would imagine, uh, because there are going to be places where you could play this even if you can't necessarily rebuild right away, and this could really save you a game. Uh, however, if you're winning the game, this doesn't seem great. Uh, just bouncing all the permanents just means you're now back to the same place you started. So I have to go with, I think, Psychotog here. Uh, that may be incorrect. Uh, for those of you who did play Odyssey back in the day, please let me know. But I think that's the pick. Uh, Upheaval, again, very, very strong card. Uh, we had a number of really good strong picks, actually, but I do think Psychotog is the one I'm going to go with here. So Please feel free, of course, to disagree in the comment section, but if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below, and as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. Again, I hope all the U.S. Uh, listeners out there had a very enjoyable Thanksgiving, uh, and I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack video. Thanks for watching, guys.